Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudobuyo playing vanilla Minecraft 15W39C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC edition. And uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about item elevator regulators. Um, I know that I said that I, I wasn't probably going to be making a video for a little while, but um, you know, um, insomnia. So uh, no sleep equals Minecraft. Um, well, uh, maybe it's the other way around, but uh, uh, in, in any case, um, I have been experimenting a little bit with regulators uh, after having um, settled on a design for an item elevator. Uh, and um, uh, let me, uh, I'll, I'll get to the regulators in just a second. Uh, so new elevator designs are needed because this uh, design by test 1370.29 has broken. Um, this was due to some much needed bug fixes, uh, which will be in the 1.9 release, but it means that uh, our favorite item elevator no longer works. Uh, so the community has really been uh, at it, uh, <laughs> trying out different designs and experimenting a lot. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, uh, this particular design here is by SC Petty. Um, this uh, will work in, at least so far in uh, 1.9. Uh, this, um, uh, the kind of the conversion kit for this is really, really minimal, which is one of the reasons why I like it. Um, uh, the, um, uh, it, it is, however, a piston launcher. So uh, items come in here and they get, uh, they get launched into the air by these pistons uh, and um, they will uh, kind of gain velocity the higher they go through the glass tower. Uh, which means if you've got a really tall glass tower, these items can just shoot out at super high speeds. Uh, uh, so let's, uh, we can see that a little bit. I've got a very short glass tower here. Yeah, so it still went pretty high, uh, but uh, his design uh, basically ensures that the items don't have any horizontal velocity by the time they uh, are launched up by the pistons, so they always land on top. So. Um, uh, this particular design is really good if you've got an item elevator that's kind of out in the open. It, um, you can just let items fly up uh, towards the build limit um, <laughs> or even higher. Um, and they'll always just land down here so you can just build your collection point directly on top of the elevator. So if you, if you don't need a ceiling on your item elevator, uh, I would probably go with a, something like this, a, 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 a piston launching design. Um, however, uh, I, for many of my item elevators, I'm not in that situation. I have, I have things that are built above them or they're underground and I don't really want to uh, 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 put a hole, <laughs> put a hole in the ground just for the item elevator for items to launch through. Uh, so um, I, I've been working on designs that will preserve the smooth motion of items through the uh, through the glass tower. Uh, and this is the design that I've settled on. Uh, the conversion kit for this is also really really minimal. A small amount of redstone, uh, pressure plate, uh, piston, and a cobblestone wall. Uh, now, the piston and the cobblestone wall are really key here. Uh, the block that's inside there, where that cobblestone wall is, that block there needs to be a block with a switchable collision box. Um, and the choices here are pretty limited. You, you've got um, some redstone mechanisms like trap doors, doors, and uh, fence gates. Uh, and then you've got uh, things like uh, this cobblestone wall here that include fences, glass panes, and uh, iron bars. Those are uh, all blocks that connect to adjacent blocks, uh, depending upon what those adjacent blocks are. Uh, and um, you've also got uh, stairs, if you <laughs> were really, really careful about it. Um, uh, stairs have a switchable collision box as, uh, as well as pistons. Uh, uh, now, um, it turns out uh, that um, in order to make that uh, um, that collision box switch, uh, if you're dealing with a redstone mechanism, then you can just power it from underneath. Uh, however, if it's uh, something that needs to connect, you've got to push a block next to it with a piston. Uh, in addition to that, uh, this opening here needs to be closed. So I need to place a, uh, I need this block to be uh, not here for items to actually get in there. But then when the items are getting ready to set up, uh, be sent up, I need uh, a piston to push a block in place here. 
Uh, well, I'm using one piston to do both of those things. So I'm using this piston to push the, up this block. Uh, oops. I'm using this piston to push up this block of packed ice, uh, which blocks the uh, the opening, and it also switches the collision box of this uh, cobblestone wall. So uh, uh, that allows me to use just a single piston and greatly reduces the redstone. And this turns out to be really, really stable. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, this is the one that I'm going to be using in my builds. Uh, so it preserves that nice smooth motion up. So uh, I have to say that I'm a little bit worried about what might happen uh, to the collision box of cobblestone walls. Um, uh, there's uh, some idiosyncrasies about it that makes me think that it might be due for some uh, fixes. Uh, but even so, uh, I've got a backup plan where I can replace that cobblestone wall with a trapdoor and everything will still work just fine. It will just be a little bit noisier. Uh, so this is the one that I'm going to use. Uh, now, the, the big problem uh, with this new type of design is that um, this piston that is closing off this opening, uh, it, you know, it has to push a block in place here. And if items are coming down the stream at the same time the piston pushes a block in place, well, that item's not really in the correct position to be sent up the glass tower. And so what will happen is it will just spit out somewhere randomly. Uh, and that will mean that this design is lossy. Uh, so if you want to avoid that, uh, you need to make sure that items are coming down the stream properly spaced out in such a way that they are never going to be crossing uh, uh, crossing over this piston when it, uh, when it fires. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you need to make sure that the items are spaced out enough that um, you're giving enough time for the mechanisms to actually do their thing with the whatever items are in there. And, and that means regulating the input stream, and, and that's really what this video is about. Um, I'm going to present uh, three different ways to regulate the input stream, uh, and they, differ, uh, they all have uh, uh, different use cases. So uh, let me start with the easiest one here. And this one was uh, suggested to me uh, by Jendrick Weiss uh, in, one of, uh, in the comments of one of my previous videos. Uh, he had mentioned uh, that items can be spaced out by allowing them to fall through a cobweb. And <laughs> I, t I tested this, it just works fantastically. It's, uh, now, it, it, there are limits to the applicability of this. Uh, basically, you have to have a um, uh, an item stream of only one kind of stackable item, uh, and it has to be only a, a, kind of a light to a moderate flow. Uh, and that's the case for a lot of farms. You know, slime farms, for example, um, is a good. Uh, this might be uh, useful for if there's enough space uh, um, uh, down at the bottom where you're collecting slime balls. Uh, so there are there are use cases for this. So, so I, I have uh, just one kind of item in here, uh, and we can see that items come down the stream. They get stuck in the cobweb, and as they're stuck there, they stack, uh, and the stacks uh, you know fall out one by one, and and they are spaced out appropriately, uh, so that they can uh, um, they're not causing any kind of conflicts with the uh, pressure plate there. Uh, so I, I really, really like the idea. It, it does work very well, and, and uh, this is something that I, I would certainly consider using in a, in a few farms. Uh, now, if you have an item stream with more than one kind of item in, in it, uh, this is not really going to work. Now we have to have something that um, uh, is regulating the items either through uh, stoppers uh, or traps or what I refer to as breaks. Uh, those are uh, those are kind of the three categories of, uh, of ways in which you can break up items. And, and this, uh, this regulator here is actually a dual regulator. I have a stopper here. There's, this is a piston here that pushes up uh, a block to uh, prevent items from continuing. Uh, and I've got another piston over here that pulls a block down to create a trap, and that will cause, uh, and that will prevent items from continuing here as well. And it turns out this dual regulator design um, it works really, really well for breaking up the in input stream. Uh, it uh, it does a very good job. Uh, let me go ahead and start this here, and we can see uh, as um, items come across the pressure plate. 
Uh, this block comes up as a stopper and this block over here goes down as a trap. Uh, I've got a couple of breaking blocks in front of the trap uh, just, to, um, just to help uh, things uh, get spaced out properly, but uh, we can see the result. Uh, items are coming across in you know, clear bunches, so it, it, um, it works very, very well for breaking up the input stream. Now, the problem with this particular design is uh, has to do with this trap here. Uh, when this block goes down, uh, I end up having uh, one this uh, this area here with too high water. And I've mentioned in previous videos, squid can spawn in there. Uh, so this design, I think, works really well, but it's not suitable to be built between layers 46 and 62 in the squid spawning area. Um, because, uh, like I said, squid will spawn here and um, that will cause all kinds of problems here. So uh, the, uh, this, I think, is the design that I would default to if I'm not building uh, uh, this, uh, these water channels between layers 46 and 62 um, because it uh, doesn't really require uh, very much redstone, a couple of pistons, a small amount of wiring, and, and another pressure plate. Uh, so there's really not a whole lot involved here. Um, I've got a, um, a very simple uh, pulse extender to extend the, uh, the signal coming from this pressure plate by an additional eight ticks. Uh, and uh, just wiring up the piston. So it's, it's not very resource intensive. Um, uh, but again, you know, I can't build this between layers 46 and 62 because of that squid spawning problem. So, uh, and it turns out getting rid of that, uh, having a dual regulator uh, where your first, uh, where your first regulator is not a trap. Uh, turns out uh, to be pretty difficult. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I eventually did come up with this design, uh, which also works extremely well. So this is more or less the same as, uh, as this design over here. Uh, I have uh, my stopper right here, and I've basically got the, uh, the same pulse extender. Uh, this repeater is supposed to be on four ticks. I've got the same pulse extender here, uh, and uh, instead of a trap, I have a dispenser with a bucket of water, uh, and uh, that dispenser is wired up to receive a signal when this pressure plate goes down, uh, when it first activates, and uh, the, uh, the last bit of signal then uh, gives it another pulse and uh, shuts off the water. So I'll have water flowing out of here for, uh, for almost two seconds. And that creates a counter flow uh, to the uh, water flow that's bringing the items in. That means that items that have gotten past the dispenser and are right here are going to get flushed across the pressure plate. Uh, items that have not made it yet to the dispenser uh, will get pushed back and they'll hang out here a few blocks, uh, a few blocks down. And items that are immediately in front of the dispenser, because I have um, changed this block uh, to be, uh, it used to be ice, but I've uh, replaced it with a non-slippery block. Items that uh, uh, are right here when the dispenser spits out its water, they will just basically freeze and not move until the dispenser uh, retracts the water source block. Uh, so let's go ahead and watch that in action here. Now you can see items getting forced back by the water flow, and then when the dispenser retracts the water, a bunch of items go across. Uh, and this works extremely well. I, I, um, uh, the stopper uh, it, um, has the correct timing, it bunches items really nicely, uh, and I end up having uh, just nice clusters of items coming across uh, with the appropriate timing for the item elevator. Uh, so this works extremely well. Um, it also uh, does not have too high flowing water any or too high water anywhere, uh, which means that there's no squid spawning. Uh, the, uh, the conversion kit for this, uh, however, is the most resource intensive. Uh, it does require four repeaters, a uh, torch, and nine redstone, along with uh, some uh, some other stuff here. Um, the big problem with this, though, is the fact that it has so many block updates. Uh, you know, there's uh, sort of gone in increasing order here. The um, the item elevator itself uh, does not have uh, is not going to cause very many block updates because it doesn't have a whole lot of redstone uh, in it. 
Um, but once you start getting regulators, now you're talking significant, uh, significant redstone, uh, uh, and that's going to cause you know a number of block updates every couple of seconds, every you know every time items come across here. Uh, and here you add in the flowing water, so uh, you know it, it's compared to what we used to have, which was that um, uh, that fence post elevator down there. Uh, that had no block updates at all associated with it, except uh, maybe at the collection point. Uh, but now you're talking, you know, uh, compared to what we used to have, uh, a significant increase in the number of block updates. So this is the most intensive build uh, that I have, uh, which is why uh, when I can, I will probably resort to this one. This one also works really, really nicely for me. I've uh, had good experience with this so far. Um, this is a, a newer invention of mine, um, but uh, it does seem to be working really, really well. Uh, but even so, uh, again, like I said, you know, you're you're talking a lot more going on here, and you're talking a lot more going on every couple of seconds, every every time items are coming across, uh, coming down the stream. So uh, these uh, these are three different cases uh, that really have. Um, uh, uh, there are three different builds that really have three different use cases associated with them, and uh, there are different levels of complexity. So I'll probably pick the most appropriate one rather than just uh, use the, that last one, which is the most generic. Um, I, the, I, I, and I will probably also tinker around some more to see if there are any other um, clever regulator designs that I can uh, that I can come up with that allow me to break up the input stream appropriately uh, in order to use uh, what I have now settled on as far as my item elevator goes. Uh, that's it then for this video. Um, if, um, if you'd like me to do a tutorial on, uh, on the item elevator or any of the regulators, uh, please let me know. Uh, and if you have any suggestions or questions, uh, please let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks very much for watching.